Johnny O'Mara there. Blonde bombshell, can we yeah. call him? I think they're all pretty well blonde, aren't they, the Americans? Yeah, Jim Gibson there, number four. David Bailey, number one, and uh, Magoo doesn't really know where he wants to go. I hope he realises he's got to do a bit better that on the track. Uh, one, two, three, four. But they're the team that's going to be this that's going to be beaten today. I think so. Very young-looking riders they are, of course. I expect now there's a few. Uh, obviously, we see a few smiling faces, but I've, I still think there's a few butterflies around there. Somewhere. Well, ready for the off then, Barry. Yeah, the gates down there. Away. That's where they go. So who's going to be first into the corner? The all-important corner. It looks like Watley. Watley. It looked like to me. Yeah, it's Ooh. Americans though. Yeah, it's Americans. First and second. And it looks like it's the first five or six places are dominated by Americans, English and Belgian riders. Quite correctly, obviously. Oh, quite, oh there's there's Noyce though. Graham Noyce in quite a low position really, so uh, not like Graham. No. Obviously of very, very much of importance is the start, especially on the sort of uh, duration of the, if you can get a little bit of a cushion between you and the rest of the pack, it's all important because the, the body temperature will really build up at later stages. Yeah, it's, uh, it really is a hot day here today. In, and look at the crowd, the crowd enjoying every, absolutely every, every second of it. Although we're only half a lap over through the race, but we'll see now uh, coming up for the leaders. We'll see who, who yeah, it's Omara, Omara from Magoo. So America one and two, followed closely there by Watley, uh, Gibson, Broman, no, there's Broman's, uh, Bailey and Thorpe. So as we expected, it's the so, Americans at yeah. the moment from the English lads, and the English lads are doing very well. Yeah, at yeah. The moment, Except, exceptionally well. At the moment, of course, the view is not being impaired by any dust, but I can't honestly see it staying that way, Keith, the way these big knobbies are ripping West German ground out this afternoon. And there's... There's something very unexpected there. That's Case van der Ven, number nine, on the KTM, right at the back of the field. So there's something probably gone wrong with uh, with Casey's bike, or he's, oh, he, he may got... even have been uh, being knocked off. But what is really pushing hard, he he's holding third, yeah, holding really third very well. quite well. As I say earlier on, when, the, when I had a little chat with him, he, he did seem very, very pleased with his machinery. Yeah, yeah. And that's half the battle, I think. There's uh, Hudson, the... Second, third of the British riders gone through. Now we have a real good shot of the massive crowd this afternoon. Really, really, really massive crowd. There's Noyce, that's the fourth of the British lads through. And the Red but Rocket. Quite lowly place though. Mind you, I think it's true to say, Keith, Graham's not had the best of years. Would you, would you agree this year? He's had, he's had his ups and downs, mm. definitely. But let's see if it's still the Americans. It is, yep. Yeah. It's Omara. Omara from Magoo, from Watley, Gibson, Vromans. Just shows you how close they are packed. And Everts and Bailey. And though that pack's moving away. That's the first of the German riders through there. And there's Hudson on the Yamaha just nipping in front of that 65 was, I think, Ralph Diefenbach. Diefenbach it was indeed, Keith. But the pace is really beginning to hot up now in front. As I said, we had Amara in the lead from Magoo, from Watley. So, they have, obviously, we said it would be the, um, the English, the Americans, and obviously the Swedes are going to come into contention a bit later on during the race, but at the moment the Swedes are really down. We haven't seen any Swedes go through at the moment, Keith. No, no, it's, it's got to be the Americans, even at this early, early stage of, uh, of the race. They've got four riders in the, in the first eight. That's right, and very accomplished riders they are too. Yeah, and it's consistent of the consistency that counts in this type of event. That's right. Remember, only three of the four count, three of the four places only count in the points this afternoon. Yeah. You know, they all follow each other in that line, and you watch the front wheelers knock one of the riders get out of line. Superb shot there. Already these um, big knobbies are beginning to rip out some sort of hollow now. Obviously, if the front wheel gets a little bit out of line and the back wheel, then we have all sorts of trouble. And with them, oops, one, one out of line anyway, a little bit different line there. 
but um, as I was saying, once the front wheel gets out of the uh, the rut, um, obviously with it being so tight racing, then the one goes down, the whole pack goes down behind, because they really are in close contention. It's Magoo's taking over the lead. Magoo, Magoo is expected, Keith. Yeah, well, they said that he was going to be quick if he stayed on, and he's stopping on, and he certainly is quick. Omar in second, though. And Watley having a superb race. That's right, there's not five but seconds. Look at that. Three Americans in the top four. And that's what counts, Keith. Yeah. But don't forget, we've got two, two yeah, English lads up yeah, the bit. But we're, we're still uh, only at very early stages, yeah? That's right. Hudson goes through there on the 83 Honda, uh, the 83 Yamaha. Already? I should say. The same. Yeah, in <laughs> September 82, and uh, we've got the 83 Yamaha out, uh, Yamaha out already. Seems to me, Keith, you're being paid by both camps this afternoon. <laughs> But yeah, quite quite true. He is on the uh, he is on the 83 Yamaha, and, yeah, and, and there it, and there he is. There he is. We had a little bit of a look in the paddock, didn't we, earlier on? And it uh, yeah, very very smart boy. Very, very smart. smart indeed. There's uh, George Joe Bay, number seven. Very accomplished rider. Yeah. Although not having the best of days. No, no, he's a little way down, but yeah. uh, it's, it's only early stages. One foot comes off a peg there. Eng van Mierlo followed by Case van der Ven, so two Dutch lads uh, team racing. That's right, the last one, of course, on a big KTM. And uh, big Jack van Veldhoven, six foot six, I think, on the KTM. But back with the leader there, Magoo. Magoo from, I think it'll be Omara. It is indeed, it's Omara, yeah, but Omara. Magoo's beginning to make a bit of an impression now, I wish counterpart so will it be will it be Omara or will it still be Magoo yeah Magoo's through so there Omara followed by Watley Watley's pulled up Keith yeah Watley's he's pushing he's pushing all the way and, and so he's thought it's like uh, Bailey's lost a bit of his fender there at the front though and Hudson out there on his own nobody near him except for Gordon and Deefen back's pushing yeah, Deefen pushing back's his, going uh, his teammate well, there yeah, yeah. Look at the different style down yeah, the line. Joe Bay's through there. Obviously, he's been watching him on different parts of the circuit, thinking, now, where where can I pitch this that tenth of a second off? And obviously, he, he's found it. And nip through. That's right. Now we've got 
powering on, powering on. Nobody's getting anywhere near him. Absolutely fantastic stylist as well. There's, there's a two uh, English. Oh, Jeremy. Jeremy put a bit of a foot wrong there, and it could yeah. have been. Uh, but it's still Thorpe and Watley, second and third. third. Followed, but on the, they're pulling a little bit away from the Belgians and the Americans there. But as I say, it's still. But it is still for me the Americans. That's right. The Americans are the team. Still got four in the top eight, and well, that's, that's good that's, enough. That's, that's superb. Good enough. That's right. That's good enough. But taking nothing away from the Brits, they're really trying hard. Yeah, yeah. and there they are. Look, Watley and Thorpe go through, and it's all about team tactics. And Wait. if they can keep out the. There's the first of the Belgians, That's Everts. Right. Uh, there's Bailey. Romans, we saw just go uh, just in front of him. There's Gibson. Gibson being dropped a little bit, though, I think. Yes, he's beginning to uh, fill the pace, I think, a little bit this afternoon. Well, we, we, are, we are towards the latter stages of the race. There's Stephen back, really powering on this. This guy's really charging at the moment. See, he's even passed George Joe Bay. That's right. And, 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 George, and passing George Joe no Bay slouch. is no mean feat. He's no slouch. Would, uh, would at this particular time in the um, racing, Keith, would um, shocks be going off the ball a little bit, do you think? Well, in this heat and this, this pace, um, things are, are bound to start to, uh, to feel the wear and tear of... Uh, well, it's, it's an amazing course. That's right, not only man, but also machine. Yeah. yeah. There's Magoo goes through again, really throwing that dirt there. Obviously, he knows the back end slide the bit, so yeah. when that starts... Thorpe happening... and Watley trying absolutely everything they know, but just can't get near him. No, no. There goes Vromans, there goes O'Mara. Sorry, that's the wrong way around. That was Everts, <laughs> O'Mara and Vromans. The eight and the six, very difficult to pick out. I think you better pick your glass up again, Keith. <laughs> that's... Uh, so still with the leading three is Watley. As Jeremy Watley goes over the skyline. And there we see O'Mara. And O'Mara being pushed all the way there by oh, yeah. Romans, number yeah. six. One num uh, number one Bailey. And there's Hudson. Hudson pushing Gibson. So Neil's got back in the so, hunt again. Yeah, so yeah. But there's the, there's Stephen back. There's the Germans. And, and of course Stephen back's going to be pushed all the way by this uh, very partisan crowd. Yeah. To the finish. That's right. And the finish Straight with the finish. finish. Yeah. So it's Magoo from Thorpe, Watley. Third man, fourth man is Romans, uh, O'Mara, Everts. There's Diefenbach. Diefenbach's past Bailey. He's past two of the Americans. Well, just to reiterate what we said earlier on, we thought it'd be between the Americans, the Brits, and the Belgians, and it's just proved the case. Yeah. It was, yeah. in the end. There we go. So the Americans did tend to fade a little bit in the latter stages of, uh, of the race. That's right. That's and right. of course, the, the crowd having a, a well earned rest. But there we see the results. Danny Chandler, of course, Mr. McGurst, followed by Dave Thorpe and Jeremy Watney from GV. Harry Everts up in the fourth, followed by Johnny O'Mara in fifth, and Andre Brown. Well, there's the showmanship, uh, as expected, Keith. The Americans doing all the uh, the fancy stuff, the wheelies, what the crowd obviously loves to see. Well, of course, the uh, as you know, Keith, I do go to quite a bit of uh, two-wheeled sport, i.e. speedway, etc. And the Americans have really excelled themselves at that this year. They've got the um, the world number one, the Bruce Panel, the world champion, of course. And, and, uh, and don't forget, they've got the 500 motocross champion, Brad Lackey, indeed. American, and the new 250 world champion motocross, Danny Laporte. So it looks like the Americans are dominating all the two-wheel sports at the moment. That's right, that's right. And a little bit more showmanship there from, looks like, number one David Bailey. Yep. And away they go. And here they come. Down goes the gate. See the who's going to be the first one to it. The Americans, yeah, Americans, O'Mara again. So, thought was well up. Now what? No, that yeah, looked like thought well up. Yeah. But O'Mara's taking the lead. So O'Mara from the Thorpe, I think. Let's wait to come back into your view, Keith. It looked like O'Mara from Thorpe for me. Yeah, it looked like noise was down at the moment. From this distance, we can't really see the numbers, but they're definitely two Americans followed by Dave Thorpe. Yeah, and there was a bet found in one somewhere. Yeah. There, that looked like Jeremy Watney as well. So, all well placed again, but it's it's got to be the Americans. Yeah, they're really the Americans are supreme so, this so consistent. 
there, it's America, America. Dave thought another American, a Belgian. I think that was another American, and that was Jeremy Watley. Uh, there, I think that was Neil Hudson just going through. Already at this stage, we've, we've literally done uh, one third of the course. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just just coming round now to complete half a lap. Yeah, there we go. We've got the American early so dominance. So, round this hairpin, let's see who, who it is in the lead. So, Mara from Magoo, from Thorpe, Thorpe from Gibson. That was Diefenbach, well placed yeah. there, the German. Uh, Belgium, Wadley. Just in so, it, it, we'd, uh, we'd uh, not picked up the uh, the American. Well, that's definitely not there. There's the American. Uh, Bailey, I think that was number one. A little way down. So, this time. Um, yeah, what, one of the Americans down a little bit. But we'll, We'll see how the race progresses. That's right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to look for him again. Long way to go yet, Keith. Yeah. One lap completed then, and it's America one and two. Great Britain third. That's Bromans in fourth. Bromans fourth for Belgium. There's Gibson, followed by... That was one of the Germans, I think. And there's two Dutch lads, um, followed by Neil Hudson. So Neil's a little bit down. Yeah, from it's, it is. Time. It's Bailey that's down. Bailey, yeah. number one, the American that's uh, that's down. In a minute, Keith will see him go down that long, steep slope. They'll really be screwing the throttle back to the stop before yeah. they come up to that and adverse in, and camber. And into that very, very tight hairpin at, right. uh, at the bottom. But it's still the Americans, one and two. Thought pushing all the way though. Yeah, Dave, as you know, Dave in the last leg had a tremendous slide. Yeah. So let's see so what he can do this, on, in this particular leg anyway. Yeah, there's, uh, there's Diefen back. That's the guy that's going to do the charging though because he had a tremendous that's ride right, in, the, uh, yeah. in the first race. There's Noyce, poorly placed again though. Well, he, of course, Diefen back did push for the laurels, but going back to Graham Noyce, um, as we said before, not having the best to ride this afternoon. Yeah, uh, definitely not. Look, look, there's Roman just passed up. That's right. So, uh, so has Dave got a little bit of um, him, problem? Well, well uh, we hope we hope he hasn't. Mind there you, Dave goes, is the uh, Watley, Watley through there, splitting to a no, a German and an American. And there's uh, Jared Ron, followed by uh, Neil Hudson, and there's Bailey. Bailey pushing along now, so yeah. he's he's going to make up lost time. He's beginning to wind yeah. the throttle under. There's uh, George Joe Bay, number seven. Yeah, and there is noise with the green helmet. Of course, we saw George, poor old George, was dropping back at the latter stages of the yes, last yeah, leg, wasn't it? Yeah. But as I say, a long, long way to go. They're just beginning to pace themselves now. Of course, just going on about Dave, thought we were early on. Dave is a great pace manager, you full well know, too. Yeah, and Roman's pushing Magoo now, so. But look at that hairpin, look straight that. in and straight out. Fantastic. Man. Really, really blasting that big hand around there. So. Dave thought now into fourth place. So Dave's beginning to. Uh, he's, well, he's, he's still he's still with them though. Yeah, he's still right. with the leaders. Watley goes through. Yes. Hudson goes through. So Neil's down the big yeah, yummy. Hudson, Hudson's uh, going uh, pretty well now. So uh, I say, well, that'd be interesting, uh, Keith, actually, to find out Neil's comments on the uh, the 70, uh, 73. I'm ten years out on the 83 Yamaha. Yeah. Because obviously um, he's going to have a few teething problems with it early on, but it's obviously given him a good uh, start to the forthcoming season. Yeah. As you can say, a uh, few waves there for the, for their own. German fans there as the decent back went through. Oh, uh, so Omar is back into second. Roman is down to third, followed by Thorpe. And those four pulling away from next man Gibson, and Gibson being pushed by Watley. So Jeremy Watley's still going this. Yeah. Jeremy's still got it between his. Um... There's the leader though, Magoo from Omara. Roman is through, and Thorpe's in fourth. Next man Gibson. So it's still these Americans, these Americans are so consistent. Yeah, because... And what they're being pushed there by, uh, by Neil Hudson. Because remember, on the European circuit, Keith, we don't we, have we the don't pleasure of seeing these top Americans, do we? No, the, the only Americans that we that we do have the pleasure of seeing over here, of course, Brad are, the, are the, the two world champions anyway. Uh, Danny Laporte, who's had a tremendous season, and... Um, Just shows you what kind of bloodstock stuck back in the US of A. Well, this is it, and uh, it has been said that these aren't the top four uh, American riders that are out here. It certainly seems hard to believe, seeing the way they're uh, yeah. chewing up the West German ground this afternoon, and yeah. chewing it up they are, because now we see a little bit of dust flying. So when we see a little bit of a 
crowd gathered together, i.e. riders, we do see the dust begin to fly. So these big knobbies are really ripping it out. Steadily. But Dave looks so relaxed, don't you agree? He's so yeah. relaxed when he's yeah, riding that there's jacket. Look, there's back. He's past Gibson, and he's past Watley as well. So this, that's the that's the man that's gonna uh, yeah. gonna push everybody else. It seems to me, Keith, it's a it's a race of two different tracks. One minute we see dust kicking up, the next minute we see deep uh, rutted earth. So uh, obviously concentration's got to be at a premium. It it is a very very hard circuit though. Very Redemanded. very hard. They may have a gorgeous view of the West German countryside there. There's Stephen Buck being cheered all the way there from Gibson, Watley, Joe Bay, and I think, yeah, Bailey. Bailey, that's so Bailey. Bailey's pushing, pushing all the way. There's Hudson. Seems that once the American, American boys see their counterpart within striking distance, they seem to, well, if there's room to put the throttle back anymore, they go for it. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, Romans in second place. Romans is riding a consistent place, though. Yeah, from Omara. So they're gradually being strung out now. That's right, a bit of a, bit of a gap now between Omara. Yeah, there's Jack Van Velt over, yeah. but of course Jack's uh, a lap down. Or more. Or more. There's Thorpe being... Oh, Diefen back pushing Thorpe all the yeah. way there. Is it the crowd, you think, Keith? Yes, well, it's got to be the... It's got to be a, a great incentive anyway. Yeah, he's going to be pushed all the way now, isn't it? It must be very difficult when they come out of the shadows into the bright sunlight yeah, there. Yeah. Especially when they're in close contention, those few riders were. Yeah. But I, I like to see that the track is very well protected, uh, protected there. Well, it's, it, it's marvellously set up. The Germans have done a, 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 an, a, an A1 uh, job of so, ooh, Van Mielo nearly lost it there, That's though. Right. But I mean, we were just reflecting then on, on obviously track safety. We see so many sports today, unfortunately, um, with a tragic end. And it's nice to see that people do care enough about well, the, people's lives. The difference that uh, we in Europe see between the uh, the famous now, the, the Ethelbrook track, and um, and the way that this track is prepared. Yeah. And um, It's certainly been prepared with safety in mind. Well, this is it. This is it. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. 
And what a pleasure that sunshine is. And look at the crowd. Yeah, and, and, what a, and, what a, and what a pleasure to see these Americans. Because they really are dominating everything. That's right. I mean, we're on about Americans probably a little bit, but remember, they're so far away from their native land, where, of course, all the Europeans, they're raced against each other throughout the season, aren't they? Most yep. weekends. So it's a nice, refreshing change to see the, uh, the, uh, the stateside lads in amongst them, and they're certainly in amongst them this afternoon. In yeah. fact, the Europeans are in amongst the Americans because yeah. uh, they're in a little bit of dominance at the moment. Yeah. There's the leader, Magoo, with only a couple of laps to go now. He, I say, let's be honest, he's not but not a foot so much a foot wrong as no. a wheel wrong. Off go the goggles there. There's there, Romans. Romans' goggles come down. Probably getting a bit steamed up, but there's uh, Omara. But those lads must be steaming hot. Am I right, kid? But these Americans have got the same sort of style. It, it, does, it does seem that, doesn't it? You know, it yeah, it's only the numbers that are putting us right. That's right. There's Bailey, the tallest of the four Americans. But even him, with a, uh, being a tall guy, um, seems to fit the machine that well. It looks like they're so relaxed when they're right. I think it's definitely going to be the Americans. Mind you, I and, think... Uh, unless something uh, <laughs> really unexpected happens, it's got to be the Americans for me, Barry. We're just looking on the right-hearted side, I think, uh, if the true stand, they've all enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the circuit and the racing this afternoon, particularly the competition, because obviously it's all about competition. Yeah, yeah. You have a fine view of the uh, Look mass at that, crowd that mass now. crowd yeah. at the back there. The, not one of them's moved. Stayed here. I don't know about Mookie. The way they're knocking up some of them <laughs> bits of loof turf uh, makes you wonder, doesn't it? But that, I, know, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. They're really, our know, thumbs go up there for the uh, the Belgian rider gone through there. Yeah. And this is the lead. I think this it's this time it's his checkered flag. A quick look back, and the it's Goo Magoo. Knows. Yeah. Two rides, two wins. What a what a rider. What can you say? Oh, well, in fact, what can you say? He said it himself. Yeah. There's a checkered flag. I've done it again. It's so yeah. easy, he thinks. But of course, it's not. There's, there's Romans go go through, and, and look at Deepen back. The, yeah. A well, he must have a ride from uh, from Deepenbat, charging through from two fairly bad starts, you'd say, but that's a, a that's tremendous right. ride from Deepenbat. Because there's Joe Bay comes through, and now that's uh, Gibson. Gibson's through, and we've lost thought. Here's the results: uh, Danny Chandler first, of course, followed by Andre Romans from Belgium, Johnny O'Mara. USA, Rolf Diefenbach, George Joe Bay, and David Bailey, the third of the Americans. So, three scoring Americans in the top six again. What else do you want? Well, there they are, first overall, Barry. The Americans with 23 points. Fully deserved. David Bailey, number one. Superb ride for me. Say one thing, Keith, that the nation would be mighty proud of them. Yeah, Johnny O'Mara, Magoo, and Gibson. But Magoo, some. Oh, there's the first we see of the American team. Danny Chandler, number three. Jim Gibson's bike there, all with the mechanics, of course. That's, that's Johnny O'Mara's bike on the scales. Looks to be a bit of a problem there, Keith. Really? They think it's okay, but uh, no, that's a failed. What possibilities of uh, too light underweight? Correct. Too light, Barry. I think they've got to weld a little bit of lead on somewhere. Of course, the petrol tanks have got to have the minimum amount of petrol in. And uh, I think I saw, uh, yeah. It's a cigar in the mouth of uh, the scrutineer there, so I hope there's no hot ashes about. That's novel. Well, look, here we have the Americans back on the scales again. Let's see what the answer is this time. It's, it's in the balance, Barry. <laughs> Funds are flying this afternoon. And... A shake of the head? It must mean, yeah, well, that's well, different. Well, it, it is different, yeah, a shake of the head means yes. It, it, well, it's obviously an Irish scrutineer. <laughs> anyway, all's well that ends well. There's David yes, Bailey's. David Bailey's bike. 
very immaculate bike, I should say. Very smart, very smart. Beautifully turned out, all these bikes. Plus Americans on the Honda this year. Very successful year. Look at that, immaculately turned out Husqvarna there. Very, very. Of course, the, the 83 model, although we're now in 82, it is the 83 model. And there, that uh, Mist I was on about earlier. Now you see them, now you don't. Certainly, certainly taking the time through that mist, I would imagine. All going fairly steady at the moment, but I don't suppose they'll be going that steady when the mist rises. Harry Everts there, a nice rearward shot of Harry, and a very, very quick Suzuki. As the official gets splattered in mud. Neil Hudson, out um, for his first time. Condor man, thumbs up, so Neil's away. There's Dave, now Dave should stop and see if it's all clear. No, Dave's not bothered. <laughs> Dave's away. Straight out, no messing. I think you were looking left for safety anyway, but... Uh... There's Jim Gibson, the first of the Americans out for practice. Sitting very low on the Honda. Dave Thorpe. Popular Berkshire lad, of course. Another one of the Americans there, watching Jeremy Watley, a practice start. And there he goes. Johnny O'Mara followed by David Bailey. Already we see the mist beginning to clear now on yeah. the horizon, so less difficulty for the riders as we see Andre Bromans take to the hills on the on the big red on the big red peril. Look at me on the yellow peril. Mc... Bailey doing, doing some real tricks. Followed by Gibson. And Danny Magoo Chandler. So let's have a, a quick word with Danny. Talk to Danny Chandler. Good morning, Danny. After practice this morning, um, what do you think about the situation today? Oh, I think it's going to be good, I hope. Well, you won both races last week at the Trophy Donassium. How do you rate your particular chances this afternoon? Well, I think I have a good chance today. I think it's just going to manner on getting a good start. You know, If you don't get a good start, I think it's going to be a little bit harder to work back up you know, from the back because the, the track is so rocky that you just got to really, you know, watch out how you pass and just be careful. I see. And do you think the opposition is going to be stronger today than last week? Because you certainly had some pressure put on you last week, didn't you? Yeah, I had a, a lot of pressure, always a lot of pressure from no, everywhere, you know. And how do you raise America's chances today? I think we have a very good chance. Of retaining the trophy? Yeah. Well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Who, who do you fear most? Oh, I fear everybody. Yeah. You know, I, don't think, I think no matter who gets a start, it's going to be you know, hard to get around, no matter who he is or what he rides. I think the key today is just going to be getting a good start. Well, let's see what happens later on. We've talked about today. Let's talk about you as an individual now and what are your plans for next season? Are you coming back to Europe next year? Yeah, I'd like to very much. Uh, I like the tracks suit me a lot better than the tracks in the States. Uh, I'd like to come over and ride the 500 Grand Prix next year, if it's all possible with Honda. And you'll definitely be staying with Honda next year? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, hopefully then at the end of the Grand Prix season, you would stay for the motocross and San the Nassian again? Yeah, I'll try. Well, it's certainly a, a lively future by the looks of it for you. Uh, I'm not going to waste any more of your time, and thank you again for your time, Danny Chandler. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we've got rid of the noisy helicopter, and now we've got a different noise now, but a very, very fine noise. 
of the drums being played by it looks like a load of carrots. There we see the three British riders, Neil Hudson, Jeremy Watney and Dave Thorpe. David Bailey there, the uh, American, the tallest of the Americans. Danny McGoo with Van de Ven and Garrett Walsink. Dutch riders, Gerard Rond there. And the Irish lads. There's uh, Andre Romans coming back from uh, the presentation. They seem to enjoy themselves this afternoon, Keith, anyway. Yeah. There they go. This one I've seen in Europe this year, but uh, here's the actual start, and away they go. Let's see who's the first to gate. And oh, look at Magoo. Magoo streaks into the lead. I see Dave Thorpe was right up there. But look at that. O'Mara right at the back. Magoo, though, look at the way he goes into that berm, followed by Dave Thorpe. Talk about berm busting, that's ridiculous. There's Everts and Laquay and Bromans, and there's Jeremy Watley. Jeremy Watley went very well placed. So we've got two British lads in the first 10 or 10 or 11, 12 places. Which can't be bad, Keith. I did notice one thing in the practice session we watched earlier on. I saw the way go, and what well, he really did go, he looked in really fine fettle. So this afternoon, we'll just see what he can do in the actual racing. I'll try and pick out a few riders here, but the, the dust and the stones and the dirt's really flying. It's very hard to pick out anybody at this. I think that's Case van der Ven that's just gone through there on the KTM. I think, I think I'm right in saying that the Americans are using some sort of guards on the bars. I don't blame them at all, Keith, because, as you said earlier on, the stones are really flying. You get them on the kneecap or the hand, they must dull the senses a little bit. It's still Magoo, though, there, in the lead from David Thorpe in second. He's going well. And that, two Belgians, Everts and Bromans and Lequay, as you said earlier. Yeah. So, uh, Lequay is he's proved his point. He's into fourth place, and there's uh, Bailey, the second of the American, I think, through. Already beginning to knock out a little berm there on the inside of that bend there, Keith. I tell you what, it's a really good view there for, for spectators. Well, they're coming into that berm and then drop down the hill into the left-hander bend before they go into a double jump up the hill. That's right, a very spectacular course, actually, the Swiss course. Very spectacular indeed. Back with the leader though, Magoo, still Magoo from Thorpe. Thorpe beginning to really chase that. There's down, Romans, Everts, and Lequ there's Lequay. There's Bailey. And Gibson. So it looks as if it's it's going to be tight between, for scoring points anyway, it's going to be between the Belgians and the Americans. It doesn't look as though the Americans are going to have it all their own way in this particular no, definitely. session. Look at Dolce go there, really turning in. Making suspension work over time there. Yeah. Now, am I right in saying that the Husqvarna is now one of the very few machines using the twin shocks? It looks as if, from what we've seen today, it's, yeah, it is the only machine here that's using twin shocks. Um, um, Apart from a few of the older KTMs. Yeah, but they say the the 1983, we, we take it being the 83 um, Husqvarna, very, very smart indeed, Keith. The, the white Husqvarna, yeah, but uh, as you say, twin shocks. There's the K and, and Joe Bay, but uh, I think Joe Bay's a lap down. But it's still Belgians in third, fourth and fifth spot. And as only three riders score points, the Belgians are doing very, very well indeed. I think, as we did, we spoke about this earlier, Keith, and I think we both agreed that the Belgians, on this particular circuit, in this particular condition, will go into itself. 33, Jackie Vimon going through there. Lovely wide, uh, well, I'll say wide line, very narrow line there to take his uh, counterpart. Yeah, Herbert Saltzman there, number 37, goes through. And Dolce again, <laughs> really pulling out all the stops. He's enjoying himself, obviously. But back with the leader, Danny Chandler again, followed by Thorpe, Romans, Everts, and Lequay, it should be. Yeah, there's Lequay. 
just, just, just going off the racing for one moment, Keith. Why is it that we've got uh, not why is it we've got Dave Thorpe on the Kawasaki, but why is it that we don't see many Kawasaki's in racing today? I, I really don't know. It's uh, I suppose it's Kawasaki policy. Um, there was only Dave Thorpe in the 500 Grand Prix this year on the, on the Kawasaki, the works Kawasaki anyway, and uh, nobody really knows what's going to happen in the 1983 season, but uh, Thorpe has shown very, very well indeed on the Kawasaki. Uh, he, he won the first race at Farley Castle this year, and of course he showed very, very well at the Trophy Donations last week in Germany, where Thorpe and Watley were the only real two riders to get anywhere ma anywhere near Magoo. That's right, that's right. So it's an extremely quick machine. Anyway, well, let's get back to the uh, the high rise there of some of these yeah. really spectacular. As we said before, this uh, this double jump, they go around this left hander, then into this double jump. The the Quay and Joe Bay goes through there. Joe Bay still a lap down though. Thorpe drops down into a very very tight left hander. Oh, extremely quickly. Though. Yeah. Look at the crowd. The crowd is massive, and aren't they enjoying it this afternoon in this Swiss sunshine? As they go over the crest of the hill there. Well, they, they've come to they've come to see all the, all the action, and they're really getting the action today, aren't they? Everybody's pulling all the stops out, and um, you couldn't wish for better racing. Very demanding sort of circuit. I don't know what you think about it, but it's very. I don't mean this disrespectfully, but it's very Mickey Mouse. It's very tight turns. Very tight turns, and a, a lot of spectacular leaps. Not a lot of greenery on the track at the moment. <laughs> what no, a lot, a lot of, he's been knocking about anyway. A lot of stones. As you said earlier, there are a, a few of the riders with hand guards over, uh, over the handlebars. I think noticeably, O'Mara is the one that's using them. week at the Trophy of Nations had two marvellous starts where he, he led the pack in both races for two, maybe three laps. But it, as uh, you may have noticed at the start of this race, he was right at the very back of the field. Yeah, I think, I think we did say it'd be interesting to see now uh, just how quickly he does come for the field. And uh, by all intents and purposes, he's really beginning to screw that uh, throttle back to the stop. Get well, he is at the moment. Well, they're, they're, they're all out to get up into the top places. Magoo is out in the lead still. 
there's Bailey going through. Bailey is, uh, I'd say, in about sixth spot at the moment behind the quake. But Magoo is so consistent, so stylish, so cool under pressure. He never seems to put a foot wrong. I remember somebody saying to me once, if he stops on the machine, he could possibly win. Uh, over the last couple of uh, races we've seen, there's no, no reason to doubt that at all. Well, I, I, the way that we've seen Magoo ride these last week at the Trophy Donations and here today in the, the first in the Motocross Donations, uh, there's not really anybody... Oh, oh so look at that. It. That's the sort of thing, just a little bit of overindulgence and uh, two men drop it, spoiling the race for the next one, which is Dolce going through there. Dolce, so. isn't it? It's his teammate, Giuseppe Gasparoni, that, uh, that yeah. did the damage. Rather a nice mouthful there, especially with a mouthful of Coca-Cola, Keith. Yes. That with Thorpe, though. Thorpe followed by... Romans, is it? Romans. Everts. No, the Quay. The Quay's the Quay. going well. Why isn't he going to begin to push through the field? And there's, there's Joe Bay. Watley, though, oh, we're very well placed. 53 Franco Pico. He's moved through the field well, so... And there's Hudson through. I'll tell you what, I reckon it's getting a little bit demanding out there now because the heat, I would imagine, is perhaps a little bit getting to them now. And with a few stones flying about, you know, they must be a little bit tense as well. So uh, I, I think they're beginning to feel the pace a little bit now, Pete. Well, they're definitely not strung out as much as they were, um, I'd say, as the trophy donation, like, as we saw last week. Back with um, Dolce, though, he's, he's really got it strong well today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not being disrespectful to the lad, but a little bit of a surprise packet this afternoon, Keith. There's a few fish going now, urging their uh, respective riders on. Yeah, that was Case van der Ven on the KTM. Was it? Going through, yeah, the 250 rider this year, but of course today, today on the 500, and doing quite well. Yeah. So Romans is through, yeah, so Romans is in second, and Thorpe is down to third. So what's Dave doing wrong, do you think? So, well, it, it may be what you, what you said, Barry, about a um, little bit of heat might be, uh, might be telling on them. Uh, you can't really tell. Of course, it could be the damping. We may have a little bit of problem with the damping. I'm not going to say the Kawasaki's prone to that, but uh, well, I noticed we, before, towards the end of the race, the uh, the damping does seem to slow him down a little bit. Well, we, we did see the Kawasaki breaking half at Luxembourg. <laughs> yes, it was a very good sign. There's Watley chasing uh, Joe Bay, but uh, Joe Bay, as we keep saying, is a lap down. Franco Pico chased there by Neil Hudson. Yes, Neil's up. And Neil Hudson there being being chased by Jim Gibson. The top of the uh, good view on the inside of the track, a little oh, bit dangerous, sort of thought. Yeah, but very spectacular though. Very spectacular. A little bit near the action, that lad there. Yeah. Obviously he's got um, not a lot of respect for his lens, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, oh and look, there's another one down. Looks like Connie Connie on the Connie Carlson. Well, there's, there's Dolce really powering on again. That's right, he hasn't lost a lot over it though. <laughs> no, but back with Magoo. Magoo into the bomb hole. Mr Chandler, of course. Chased by Romans. Romans seems to have caught him up a little bit there's there. Dave. Dave thought being dropped slightly. But it's still holding third from Everts in fourth. Everts is beginning to uh, use a little bit, getting that um, Suzuki really on full steam now, Keith. Yeah, there's Bailey, got Bailey through with Lequay just slightly in front of him. Joe Bay through, there's Watley on the Suzuki. We should be looking now for Hudson. And there is Hudson, yeah. Well, that little bit of a divot there they're knocking out, the front wheel's beginning to uh, get well dog in there, so yeah. be careful they don't get too uh, silly. Well, Gibson just behind Pico. Thirty-one. There's uh, there's Bruno through. It's a nice little uh, jump into that bomb out bomb hole, and then straight back into the ruts there. And just watch Dave Thorpe drop yeah. down. That's it. Whack open the power, and off he goes over the crest. The camera angle doesn't really show how steep that really is. It really is. A bomb hole. You've got to be a spectator down in the hollow to appreciate just how steep it is, Keith. Yeah. There's the quay being pushed all the way by uh, by Bailey. And Bailey, no, no message. Straight into that hole and out again. So it just does not exist. Yeah. 
as does Watley. Watley straight in. Hudson straight in. Just no no shutting off or anything. That's it's right. straight in and straight out. Pico goes through. It's not what you would say at the men from the boys because they're all men here this afternoon. Yeah. So it says Bruno. Omar, so Omar has really done well to, to pull up into the top 15, yeah. 20 places. He's really pulled himself. There was suspension working overtime on the Honda there. But look at the gap now that's been pulled out between Roman the second man there. He certainly didn't lose anything by going on the inside line, Keith. And there is Dave. And it's Dave Thorpe in third. A big um, Berkshire bomber. We're looking now for Everts to come through. 28, that's Garrett Walsink, but I think he's a lap down now. But look at the gap now that's... Opened up. That opened, yeah, between uh, Thorpe and Everts. Everts being dropped a mile. Well, uh, it's not like uh, Everts to be dropped. Uh, 30, Patrick much, Fiora going through. It's... Bailey's, Bailey's through his in next. So Americans beginning to uh, come back into the, uh, the racing again. 54, Giuseppe Andriani goes through. There's Watley. Watley should be followed by Hudson. And there is Hudson. There's Neil. So we've got three British riders up in contention, as has the Belgians uh, and the Americans. That's so right. it's going to be really tight. There's not, you, we're not going to see the Americans running away with this one anyway. Is, uh, is Neil Hudson on the 83 the Yamaha this year? Well, already, I should say, is, is Neil... No, he's on, he's on the 82 Works Yamaha that he's, that he's done all the uh, World Championship rounds with this year. Coming now towards the, the end of the race, and uh, lap, lap boards being shown to all the riders to... Come on, you've got to get That's that next right. man. Getting rather excited all Because now. it's points that count. Look at the look how the Americans and the Americans are going quite frantic now to get Bailey up into uh, into a higher position. Amongst the fray, That's right. They're even contenders. You see the Italian flag there on the crest of the hill. There's Hudson going through. I think with only one or two laps to go, the the. We're going to close up a little bit now. Yeah, Dave Arnold there on the left, the uh, American team manager. Trying, manager. trying to urge all, all his riders on as uh, Omar and him pushed all the way. <laughs> They're enjoying it anyway in the, uh, the Swiss sun this afternoon, really enjoying it. I think that there, um, it, Italian... Uh, well, they're not Italian team managers, but... Uh, well, looks like she's doing a bit of a circus act there, Keith. <laughs> well, that was uh, Giuseppe Gasparoni, who crashed earlier, going through, being... Uh, could well have been his wife that was cheering him on. Well, I hope for his sake it is. And we see one lap from the American board. You were very That's quick there, Keith, the US of A, you were very quick there. Oh, it was very quick. Yeah. Ten out of ten for observation. Okay. Was that what lap they went through there? Just missed the um, actually flying at this stage, so it's very difficult to pick up the uh, some of the riders from behind. The Honda camp there looking on anxiously. Yeah, very anxious. <laughs> There's not very many spoils there, is there? Apart from that young lady at the, t at the back. Who knows what she's flying? I don't want that. There she is. Ale, ale, oh! Yeah, I think she's rather excitable. Yeah, I think she wanted him to go a bit quicker. She's very attractive. And looks like the chequered flag, yeah, and it's got to be Magoo. Unless he's fallen off with a, a hundred yards. No, there's Magoo. Punching his fist. So, yeah. Magoo wins yet again. And we should be looking for... Broman's second, Broman's his second. Thorpe comes in in third. So D Dave's not displaced himself, Keith. No, marvellous ride, really. And such good company, really. Bailey through, being clapped in by uh, all his supporters. There, Watley and Hudson, the two British lads coming in together. So they've not rode bad at all this afternoon. They've really got the um, English crowd on the feet, I would imagine, with some super yeah. road racing. There, there are a few British supporters here, but uh, of course Switzerland is 
fair old ride. It is quite a, quite a drive. And, and we also have seen uh, quite a few American supporters. So whether they've come over as family or, uh, or may even have been from the German bases, uh, not that far away. Bit of entertainment at uh, half time. <laughs> Looks pretty spectacular, Rocky. Very spectacular. So it, here we have the results anyway. First, Danny Chandler. Second, Andre Romans. Third, David Thorpe. Fourth, David Bailey, USA. Harry Everts in fifth. McQuay sixth. Seventh, Jeremy Watley. And eighth, Neil Hudson. So we've got three Belgians, three British riders, and two Americans in the top eight. Remember, that was heat one, so uh, we look forward with a lot of excitement races. Now, who will be the first one this time? Remember last time? It was Magoo last time, and it looks to me as if it's Magoo again. We can't really tell from where we're positioned at the moment because of the dust, and but that's Magoo. Magoo is definitely out in the lead, followed by Lequay. Lequay from Gibson, Gibson from Watley, that, I think, was O'Mara. So O'Mara in a better position than what, he, than what he was in the first race. That was Gerard Ron going through. There was David Thorpe. But the rider's coming through very, very quickly indeed. There's Joe Bay coming through. Obviously, Keith, on the second leg, there's going to be a lot more uh, stone. Well, not a lot more stones particularly, but a lot more dust line. Well, the Americans have really got to go for it, using uh, an Americanism. That's what, well, it looked to me as though they're first, second and third, so uh, they've gone for it. The Americans definitely a lot better place than they were in the first race. There's Heinz Kinney going there, very spectacular through there, so is Dolce going through. Gives you a little bit more of a sense of uh, urgency about the riders when they look from this particular angle. The 54 Giuseppe Andriani, one of the Italians goes through it as 22 on Linfers drops down as 36 George Wright from Austria. There's uh, Harry Everts. That's right. A good shot there, Keith. Coming out, out of the out of the skyline and really whistling down this uh, this bank. Very, very hard indeed to see any of the numbers and who the actual riders were. There, we can pick out the Kawasaki of Dave Thorpe though, definitely. I tell you what, we've been extremely lucky though, over the last few weeks, but with a little weather key. It's been super. Very conducive to really exciting and fast races. Well, we were very, very pleased with the weather we had that we had in Geldorf in Germany last week, but uh, to get an, another day like we had last week today, it's, um, well, you couldn't, you couldn't wish for a better day. Right. Obviously, the spectators have paid uh, their money and they want to see some action, and action's what they're seeing. They really are. Very large crowd here this afternoon. There's Mugu coming out of the Marocaine leap. And there's two, two Belgians, followed by uh, Jim Gibson and David Bailey. So there's the Watley, the first of the British riders. It looks like Thorpe's down. I haven't seen Thorpe go through yet. There's uh, Omara go through. Garrett Walsing's just gone through there. But no. Thorpe, yeah. So he's up to Dave because Dave was pretty well up with the lead in. He, what, uh, he was in third, second or yeah. third position. And it's gone wrong. And he, he's still not come through, so he, there's something happened somewhere. Yeah, no Dave. There's Everts. And 32. That's Patrick Bonnie, but there's Thorpe. There he is. Well, thought so Thorpe has definitely had an off somewhere because there's Magoo through for um, his, his next lap, followed by Romans, very, very tightly indeed there. So we've got America 1 and 4 and 5, and the Americans 2 and 3. And there's the first of the British riders, Jeremy Watley, there's O'Mara. So it'll be interesting to look for telltale signs on uh, Dave's machine as we see him come on the next lap then, because... I didn't see anything uh, on towards on his bike, but uh, something obviously happened. Well, I, I would think that he must have had an off somewhere. Yeah. But the race is definitely on up front where we've got four riders, two Americans, two Belgians. 
31 there, that's uh, Bruno. Why, why is it, you think, uh, I'll ask a silly question, please. why is it that the, the, the Belgians like the Suzuki, Suzuki machinery that much better than any other sort of machinery? We've got the Americans on the Hondas and so on and so forth. Why do you think it is? <laughs> I think it must be one of those things. It's... Uh, I, I, I don't really know. It's Because uh, you don't usually get... I mean, they, OK, they're in a team event, but sometimes they do like to ride it as an individual, so you would think they would like individual machinery, but they all seem to be on the same, don't they? Apart from Lequay, who's on the Honda. That's <laughs> exception to the rule. Yeah. There's Bailey pushing Lequay all the way, and there's Watley really climbing through nice the shot, air. Nice shot, shot of Jeremy there. There's Hudson through. So it, it really looks as if the British lads have shot their bolt. And that Romans is in the lead. That's the first time that we've seen Magoo headed. Andre is really... He's really knocking it back to the stops. He's really throwing everything. And he's, being, the wind. he's being waved on by the uh, frantic crowd. <laughs> the frantic crowd, yes. Uh, so we've got Belgium one and three, America two and four. And there, that's Watley in fifth. You're right, Keith, what you just said a fraction earlier. I've not seen uh, Magoo headed. No, it, we've seen Magoo lead in uh, the first and second race in Gaeldorf. And of course, he won the first race here today. Um, Let's see if he can win it again. I think we're in for a few fireworks to work <laughs> definitely, the end. Definitely. The end. Mind you, don't you think it adds a little bit more for the crowd when you've got uh, an so accomplished rider, Esmagu, being headed by uh, one of the very popular uh, Belgian riders? Well, Vromans did, did only just get beaten uh, in the 500 World Championship by only a, a handful of, uh, of points from uh, the American Brad Lackey this yeah. year. So uh, right. Vromans is no mean rider. And he's been around a few years, and I don't mean that uh, for the wrong reason, but he's a very experienced rider. We'll just have to wait and see if he's still got the lead. Everts has gone through, but he's he's quite well down, as is thought. So I would think that it's going to be... Right, Magoo is back in the wow. lead. Wow. So Magoo won. Roman second, Bailey's now third. That burn's beginning to catch a few riders out. And if you notice, then Magoo got a little bit crossed over that burn. He did. And it. if that back wheel gets out of line, it could cause them a few problems.
Here's Magoo, passing one of the back markers. So Magoo followed by Romans, but pulling away from Romans now. Mm, looks like a, a bit of a tail end there. And, Bro and there's Bailey in third. Laquay in fourth. Quay's going well again, too. He's been very consistent over this series. Looks like Jeremy Watley gone. Jeremy Watley there, followed by uh, yeah, Neil Hudson. Hudson. So they're keeping it pretty well wound in. 35, time. Heinz Kinnigartner from Austria on the Yamaha. So we look now for the Dutch. But it's Jim Gibson with those um, hand covers. 26, that's Gerard Ron. And Dave Thorpe pushing on now past, I think that was Dolce. There's Magoo though. Romans still in second. 36. That's George Reiter, followed by Lequay. 22, Arne Linfers. 32, Patrick Boniface. Watley and Hudson go through. So that's so a little private battle of their own, look of it. Well, it's, it's more of a, a little bit of a, a team ride, I think. Yeah, Each pulling uh, one another along. 27 case van der Ven going through. Nice little pass on the inside there, isn't yeah. it? Very nice. And that, as you were saying earlier, Patrick Fuhrer on the 1983 Husqvarna. Yeah, very smart for sure. And poor Jim Gibson goes through there. As does Dave Thorpe. Out of the shadows into the very bright sunlight. Look at the crowd there. They just give you some indication, people. A huge crowd this afternoon. Look at them. Of course, we're now towards the end of the race. Romans, still pushing the Suzuki right to the limit, I would imagine. The way in four. George Reiter goes through there. Neil Hudson should be followed by Jeremy Watley. It looks as if Jeremy's feeling the pace a little bit because he's definitely being dropped. Now, is that somebody about to pass him, or uh, no. can he pass them? He's certainly slowing down some, key. There's a O'Mara, 27 case van der Ven. So that the pace must really be telling now, because yeah. they've had... Well, the first race <laughs> was very hot, and th this second race was, is definitely no, no cooler. But these machines these days are so reliable, Keith. I mean, a few years ago, uh, we won't mention machinery, but some machinery are very, very prone to breakdowns over this sort of uh, distance. And well, uh, everything's advanced so much, hasn't yeah. it, right nowadays? Bailey, look there, Bailey pushing Broman, so let's see if, if uh, Bailey can uh, snatch Saturn from, uh, from Broman. Such a hot demand can cause no end. Yeah. Look now, yeah. just to see if... Um, There's Omara goes... Through with, yeah, we're, we're towards the latter stages of the race now as Watley goes through, taking the signal from his mechanic, Chris Scrivens. These riders helped all the way, really, for, by these um, very efficient lap scorers. Um, very attractive lap there scorers, he goes. Right? So we're, we're looking now for. Omar has finished. Jem just about got it by about a tyre width, I think. He's there. It, well, it looks as if the Americans have got on the board first OK. Yeah. And there we have the, the results of race two. Ja Danny Chandler again. David Bailey just snatched second from Andre Romans. Uh, Jean-Claude Lequay in fourth, followed by Neil Hudson, Heinz Kinnigadner. But it's still the Americans, the Americans first overall with 24 points, Belgium second with 40, and uh, England, Great Britain, 51 points third. Can't be bad, Keith. Can't be. What a superb day's racing you've had. Absolutely tremendous. I the bet they're quite ready for that champagne as well. The Americans have fulfilled all what's been said of them. Absolutely tremendous. I can't wait for next year. Yes, I couldn't agree more, Keith. I think we're in for an exciting prospect, from, especially from these so young and talented Americans, as they all take a really worthwhile drink now. There's the motocross, the nation, 
trophy being held high by Magoo. David Bailey enjoying the surroundings. Hats being thrown by everybody. I suppose all, if the truth's known, Keith, all they want to do is to dive into the most cool shower that is available, don't you think? It looks like they're having a pretty cool shower yeah. at the moment with that shower. Well, that shower everybody else, I think, yeah. Very nice uh, medals, medallions, what, what we call them. Oh dear, I've heard of beer shampoo, but I think that's <laughs> going to the extreme. <laughs> Still, they've got a wonderful rapport, these Americans, haven't they? Look at it. Yeah. Loving every minute of it. Absolutely every minute. Yeah. Well, a handshake from Magoo. Very friendly lot. 